Chipping sparrows are fairly uncommon in our area, though I have seen them twice during fall migration time. Males and females look alike. This one, photographed in Saskatchewan, has chicks to feed. When fledglings leave the nest, they can only make short flights at first when danger threatens. The fox sparrow is named for its reddish back and tail. The brown chevrons on the chest provide definitive field markings that distinguish it from the smaller, grayer song sparrow. In winter, the fox sparrow is a little duller and grayer, but you can still see the rufous on their tail and wings. This fox sparrow is preening its tail feathers. Preening is very important for all birds. It oils the feathers and keeps them water resistant. Song sparrows range across the continent from the Arctic Circle to northern Mexico and remain one of our most common birds on Vancouver Island year-round. Their appearance varies from region to region. Note the length of tail, the paleness, and the black chest spot on this prairie song sparrow. Now here is one of our coastal song sparrows, much darker, grayer, and shorter tailed, but still with that same pattern of facial markings. This song sparrow is eating seeds from alder cones. Again, note the short tail and the overall streaky grayish-brown coloring. Song sparrows nest on or near the ground beneath concealing bushes. This youngster is nowhere near old enough for flight. As soon as chicks are fully feathered, they scatter through the tall grass and brush, calling so the adults can find and feed them. This fledgling is old enough to fly and has discovered that bird feeders provide an easy source of food. This fledgling's tail and flight feathers look fully developed, and its color pattern looks fully adult, but it's still begging for food. Although it now looks fully adult, the yellow on the beak marks this individual as a youngster. Once they become independent, fledglings are considered juveniles until mature enough to mate. Gold crown sparrows are very common on Vancouver Island all year round and are often seen in flocks, especially in winter. Note the heavy black eyebrow and the yellow on top of the head. Winter colors look duller, but the identifying gold crown still shows. Note the plain unmarked breast with no streaking.
Males and females look alike, but the streaky crown on this individual may mark it as a juvenile. This one is a winter adult. Even with the duller colors, that gold crown makes an unmistakable identification mark. Here is another winter adult from the front. House sparrows are an invasive species. Introduced from Europe in the 1800s, they have spread across most of North America. This mated pair, female on the left, male on the right, are searching for lost crumbs near an outdoor eating area. House sparrows are urban birds, nesting and foraging near human habitation. The male house sparrows seem to do much of the feeding of the young. This fledgling looks much like a female, but the yellow corners on the bill and the short, not fully developed flight feathers show its youth. Dark-eyed juncos come in a variety of regional subspecies. The Oregon junco is one of our most common and numerous songbirds. Less common is the slate-colored junco, occasionally seen mixed in with flocks of Oregon juncos. Juncos tend to nest low, often on the ground beneath ground cover. Eggs are generally laid one a day, so siblings hatch a day apart. This Oregon junco fledgling can be identified by the pink bill, the dark hood, and the orange sides. Easily mistaken for a song sparrow, the Lincoln sparrow looks paler, more buff-colored, with finer, darker streaking. The range of the Lincoln sparrow includes the North Island in summer and the South Island in winter. The savannah sparrow can also be mistaken for a song sparrow, but looks much whiter and has a yellow eyebrow. Savannah sparrows summer across North America as far north as the Arctic Sea, but winter in Mexico. This savanna sparrow is sheltering from the cold autumn winds behind a log on the beach at Parksville. Yellow on the wing and tail feathers helps to identify this pine siskin. They stay all year round, but numbers vary from year to year. Notice the very slender, pointy bill. In spring, you can often see large flocks of siskins feeding on alder seeds.
This pine siskin in spring looks resplendent in fresh breeding plumage. It is feeding on cedar seeds. White-crowned sparrows stay all year round on the southern third of the island. They thrive in both urban and wilderness habitats. Males and females look alike. Through fall and winter, white-crowned sparrows tend to go in flocks. In summer, you're more likely to see them one at a time. This individual nests somewhere around the new high school, and we often see it when we go for our evening walks. The juvenile white crown sparrow looks much like the adults, but with brown crown stripes rather than black. According to Sibley's field guide, tree sparrows are common and winter on Vancouver Island, but this is the only one I have ever seen. I mistook it at first for a juvenile white-crowned sparrow, but the buffy colouring and the two-toned bill helped to identify it as a tree sparrow. Tree swallows are common summer birds on the island, nesting in birdhouses and tree cavities. I don't have a photo of the female, which looks duller and browner. You usually see swallows in flocks, flying low over fields or water, catching insects out of the air. Barn swallows are very common summer birds and nest almost exclusively on man-made structures in nests built of mud and straw. These fledgling barn swallows can fly, but still depend on their parents to feed them. The gape of a fledgling bird looks enormous. When they see a parent coming, they open wide and hope theirs will be the mouth to receive the delivery. Northern rough-winged swallows are uncommon summer birds. While some swallow species nest in colonies, rough-winged swallows nest singly and can sometimes be seen swooping over fields and water in company with other swallow species. When the adult bird on the left saw me watching and taking photographs, it tried to urge the juvenile to fly away, but it stayed to satisfy its curiosity about me. These beautiful birds are the most common swallow species in our valley. They can be identified from other swallows in flight by the white that sweeps up the side of their rump and almost meets over their back. The females look more drab than the males without the bright white face mask.
purple martins are uncommon and localized. They nest in communal groups in man-made martin houses near water. Purple martins appear to use a kind of echolocation to hunt for flying insects. Females and juveniles look much browner, with pale undersides. Nighthawks are usually seen in the evenings on the hottest days of summer, hawking for insects. Despite their swallow-like appearance, they are unrelated to swallows. Western tanagers are fairly common summer birds. This is another species I call not robins because their song sounds similar to a robin but has a different pattern. The females look much drabber and more greenish than the males. The thick, strong beak and white wing bars serve as identifying field markings. The Swainson's thrush looks plain brown on the back and tail and has a soft speckling on the breast. They are one of my favorite bird singers. This Swainson's thrush is feeding on salmon berries. Notice the soft speckling on the breast. This adult has a beak full of grasshoppers to feed to its chicks. Whenever you see an adult bird carrying food, it means they are feeding young. This chick is so young it has almost no tail. Perhaps it fell out of the nest. This Swainson's thrush fledgling is suffering from bird pox, a mosquito spread disease that will eventually kill it. The hermit thrush looks very similar to the Swainson's except for the rufous tail and bolder chest spots. Hermit thrushes are year-round residents, but seldom seen except in winter. Hermit thrushes have a shorter, rounder body shape than the Swainson's thrush, and notice how large and dark the breast speckles look. Yellow corners on the bill mark this bird a juvenile. Also, young birds tend to be curious and naive about their own safety. The American robin is one of the most widely recognized bird species in North America. They do migrate, but northern populations winter on Vancouver Island, and in spring our summer residents return in large flocks. The bold, white, broken eye ring makes this species easy to identify even when you can't see the orange breast. This individual, feeding on holly berries, has feathers worn to frayed white edges. By spring, it will have fresh new breeding plumage. Some berries are better in winter after a frost has softened them.
crab apples make another excellent source of winter food. This fledgling, fresh from the nest, barely has any tail. Note the speckles on the back and the dark spots on the orange breast. This juvenile is a little older, looking much like an adult except for the speckles. This front view shows the light breast speckling on this juvenile. This juvenile has much bolder, darker, and more extensive speckles. The Townsend Solitaire is rare in our area. This is the only one I've ever seen. Note the robin-like shape and the white eye ring. Varied thrushes stay year-round, but they are seldom seen in town until the cold weather arrives. Varied thrushes look very much like robins, except for the black necklace, orange eyebrow, and orange wing markings. The female varied thrush has only a faint necklace and paler colors all over. The western spotted towhee is one of our most common year-round birds. You will often hear their questioning call from the bushes. Red eyes and large white spots under the tail help to identify these birds. Females look dark brown rather than black like the males. I didn't recognize this juvenile towhee until I noticed the white spots under its tail. It doesn't have the red eye yet, but the shape of the beak and the pale wing spots provide other identifying characteristics. Beep, beep. 